you rapping cool. This is episode 28 of Sketch Watch Play. I am John Flurry, and we are a once or twice a month geek pop culture podcast talking TV, film, cartoons, video games, and any topic that falls within those. You can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, and most general podcast apps and directories. Please consider subscribing to us on your platform of choice to stay up to date. Follow us on social media. We're on we're at Sketch Watch Play on Twitter and Facebook.com slash Sketch Watch Play, where we post more updates. And we encourage you to leave feedback on those or leave a review on iTunes or email us directly at sketchwatchplay at gmail.com. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, and even suggest possible topics for us to talk in the future. Now, if you haven't kept tabs on those social media pages, you're probably wondering both why this episode has taken so long to come out and why we aren't discussing the recent Rampage movie after Chris picked it last time. Well, we've begun another period like last year where Chris had to take has had to take a temporary hiatus from the show due to an increased workload and real-life priorities. So much like last year, I'm going to keep things going by filling the void he left with guest co-hosts, including familiar guests from the show's past and possibly some new ones. We'll still give Rampage that promised episode whenever Chris does return, and the silver lining is that by then it'll probably be easily available for you to rent or stream since it's barely left in any theaters right now. But our first guest host is one you'll likely recognize if you've listened to us for a while or even to listen to our guest appearances on another show, so good sir, please reintroduce yourself. Uh, hello there, I'm Felipe Diaz Vera, a host of Generation Animation, former host of RBR Weekly Wrestling Talk, and a Twitter nut, honestly, at this point. Uh, so, Returning from uh, our Powerpuff Girls and Sam and Max episode, which I both yes, recommend. Indeed. How have you been? Uh, as well as uh, our semi crossover that happened. Uh, yes. Uh, I've been, I was on individually a couple times before it started. Then me and Chris were on for Semi Jack, and Chris was on for House Movie Castle. Yes. Uh, so basically, these two worlds kind of have already entered it, at oh, least yeah. with each other quite a few times already. Yes. But I'm more than happy to be back. Yeah, I, I it's love, nothing I new, but when show, something works, John, you keep so. doing it. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> also, Tyler from our uh, Infinity War spoiler cast and uh, our Marvel episode, also there. And Mark from our Square Enix. I mean, no, no, our Final Fantasy episode. So, how have you been, Felipe? Uh, I'm doing all right. Um, it's been a crazy few weeks. Um, basically, a lot of a lot of work situations. I'm trying to see if I can become manager in terms of job, real life stuff. Nice. Um, episode 300 on Generation Animation is coming up really soon and we're trying to plan what we want to do exactly um, and on top of that Gen N it also now has a Mixler Elite page uh, well technically not Generation Animation fanoff.com yeah your podcast so, network so if, yeah so you go to fanoff.com uh, or uh, mixer.com slash fanoff uh, there's going to be a live stream page for all the shows so that's Erie International RBR Weekly Wrestling Talk Generation Animation any show that's under the fanoff banner they're now able to go live. Yes, so they they have a good variety doing... of shows. I'd recommend RBR if you're into professional wrestling, and Erie International covers a different horror movie every week. Yes, indeed. So um, we're, we're, we're going to start streaming live. We just got to figure out what we want to do because this literally happened in the middle of the week out of nowhere for us. So it's like, oh, this is happening. Yeah, they're also, so, as of this recording, your released episodes are in the middle of a themed bug month or June bug month. Yes, uh, we do have a Discord, uh, which you can find links to our Discord on every single episode that we Yes, I recommend signing up. It's very Generation entertaining. Animation. Yes, and uh, we, we also like to give people behind-the-scenes stuff, uh, previews of upcoming shows that we won't share anywhere else. Or polls. Um, oh, of course. And uh, we put a poll up. Well, first of all, we asked the Discord, hey, we want to do a theme month. What do you guys want to do? And they gave us suggestions, one of which was the bug month. We then put a poll, put it on all our social media to vote, and bug month won. And so far, we are halfway through. We talked about B-Movie and A Bug's Life. And if you could see a theme, Tyler picked Ants for next week. Yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> Finally, an excuse to talk about B-Movie, which was an amazing episode. <laughs> Even though B-Movie is such a dumb movie, but there's so little substance to it that like half the episode was about other stuff, like the Rose Bowl. <laughs> I'm still upset that they, like, it's, like, Dave was so adamant about the fact that it doesn't matter that it's called the Rose Bowl. But, they, like, it's literally a major plot point in the film. Call yeah, it the I was Rose Bowl. I was waiting for him to, need to go like you're from England. What do you know about the Rose Bowl? <laughs> he literally thought it was about roses, and I'm like, no, college football. <laughs> um, and so so yeah, so that's the main thing right now. And so and oh, also, where can people find you and the show on Twitter? Okay, so uh, for the show, you can find the website itself is generationanimation.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, social media, we're at twitter.com/slash/genanimation. G E N uh, as well as Tumblr, it's genanimation.tumblr.com. Yep. And our Facebook page is facebook.com slash generationanimation. All one word, no spaces, no no dashes, no nothing. As for myself, I am both on Twitter and Tumblr at Fizucker. 
And you can also find my SoundCloud uh, if you want to find also a little more uh, best of and behind the scenes stuff from Generation Animation. I post it on there every now and again. And for the record, it's F I Z Z U C K E R. Yes, indeed. Not uh, a common nickname, so it's worth uh, spelling out. That's why. That's why. Yeah, that's why I love having it. Cause like, at first I thought it was a dumb thing that that. So have I ever told the story of the background of my name? I before? think you said it was kind of a play on the Snoop Dogg for Rizzle stuff. So, so sort of yes. Uh, so basically, when I was in middle school, I was watching Total Request Live, uh, and Snoop Dogg was the guest, and um, Carson Daly, being the lamest person on the face of the planet at the time. <laughs> Just basically goes up to Snoop Dogg, what up, my mother for Zucker? Now, me at 11 thinks that's the funniest thing on the face of the planet. And so I make it my aim name. <laughs> and it stuck. I, but, but I mean, when I first started, I thought it was like a soda pun or something because of fizzing. Or like somebody called – or like maybe because your, your name's Felipe and that was a nickname somehow. Like, hey, I, I – but that was <laughs> – also that's, music. That's the story. Timely. And the main reason why I kept it is because there's literally nobody else that – like, you know, I had other nicknames like SS Press or whatever. Yeah. But the thing is, those are decently common. And so, like, there's no, really – basically, if you look up the Zucker on anything, that's me. Yeah, I can sort of, sort of relate because – well, do you know the history of my nickname? Not particularly, no. Okay, so kind of similar. It wasn't AIM, but it was back when I was like 10. It was like we're talking 97, and I first got a personal email when my parents got a new internet provider. Um, and my little brother Patrick, Pascal's on the show, he would have been like seven or eight at the time. His friend, One of his friends was using the term bohunkus, which means butt or ass or anything like that. And I thought that was hilarious. And obviously I didn't look up how you actually spelled it which I think is like B-O-H-U-N-K-U-S or something. So I went, I'm going to call myself B-Honkus, B-E-H-O-N-K-I-S-S. So this slightly distorted version of a dumb of a dumb word for your butt became my permanent nickname. Yeah, now we both have dumb, slightly vulgar nicknames. My, from my, my <laughs> mom, this is such a mom story. She's been like, John, if you're going to send out resumes and stuff, maybe you should change your email. I'm like, mom, nobody knows what this means. Nobody knows what a hunkus means. Like that, my brother sent me a clip from like Brooklyn Nine-Nine where somebody used that word and had to explain it. Um, <laughs> but, and and real, so another real quick, just to catch up, uh, I, I'd still recommend you follow Chris's, uh, Chris on Twitter while he's away from the show. He's at C. Wade, the sequel, letter C, Wade, like water, the sequel. He's still working on his passion project that feature at the Will of Monsters. I believe he's I've been, currently. I've been do- seeing him post updates on Facebook, and I'm very curious to see what the final pro- you, at least of his pitch. Did has, you ever so. see it on when, on Vimeo when he posted the animatic? I, I never got a chance to. No. It's amazing. Um, I wish. I believe he has secured some funding for it. It's super ambitious because it's like 40 minutes long. But I was super impressed with what I saw. I might ask him if I can help in any way with production on it. Uh, because I believe he's mainly doing stuff through the Adobe Creative Suite, which I have. So you can see him talk about that. You can see him talk about, you know, other personal personal things going on. His thoughts on, like, pop culture and news events. And, you know, he I doubt he would be upset if anybody reached out saying, hey, I know you're from the podcast. How are things? Um, so we wish Chris the best. You'll hopefully you'll hear from him sooner rather than later. But uh, I want him to take his time with, with the stuff. Real life is always more important than a podcast, as fun as podcasts are. Uh, yes, indeed. The same my, thing. That's why. That's why. If you're a Jen Ann fan, Mark hasn't been on for the past two and, months. Or my Bianca it. hasn't been on regularly for like the past few years. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. We love Bianca for the record. Bianca and, uh, and Mark are both great. Yeah. But uh, yeah. real life takes priority. Um, and just real quick, pl- self plug. Uh, I have finished two things that I've teased in the past. Uh, one a little relevant to you guys. Uh, me and Chris have both gotten involved in one of my favorite animation movements lately: the reanimate concept, where. If you haven't seen anything like that, like uh, basically some people have had the idea to like, take an older cartoon episode, isolate the audio, and basically the idea is that in the show, every time the, the camera cuts in this project, somebody else, an animator, reinterprets the scene visually. So you can find there's been one for Dragon Ball, Sailor Moons, uh, newer stuff like Steven Universe. My favorite so far is the Mama Luigi Mario World one. Chris is currently involved in one. I think he posted some character designs for recently. Is the, it Kirby, uh, Kirby right back at you? Yes, the right. episode, maybe the best episode of that show where they make their own anime. That episode's great because it's literally just slamming the horrible production crunch of, of cartoon production. Yes, um, and, uh, and you're involved in the DK reanimation. 
Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Donkey Kong Country reanimated. On Twitter, I believe they're at DK Reanimated, uh, which is still one of my favorite episodes you've ever done because uh, that- <laughs> nobody wanted to be. But the funny thing is, I, it's, it's a shame that Mark wasn't on at the time because for as much as I don't like that show, me and him have gone on 4 a.m. rants where we just send each other back and forth. He mentioned in a random episode once, like he can't believe all the like the professional musical numbers they did for it. <laughs> yes. Like, so many memes of that show, both for the songs or for the bad CG. Um, and there are things I legit enjoy about it, mainly when the villains are doing stuff. And I remember that's like you said, the one joke you laughed at was with K. Roll. So um, yeah. and I believe that voice actor was having a ball. Like, he was great. But, yeah, we're doing an episode about that. And I got a shot with Dixie Kong, my favorite character from the games. Uh, so that has been submitted. And you can find both. I did a behind-the-scenes clip of it up on YouTube showing the original clip, my re- re- reinterpretation, and the process of it. Uh, and the other, the other cool one is I'm trying to do more gaming videos, and I gave myself a deadline for this because E3 was coming up, which we're about to start talking about soon. Uh, I did a Smash Brothers, uh, I guess I can say now Super Smash Brothers Ultimate character newcomer prediction list. Five, My top five that I want and my top five that I expect. Uh, and so far, one of them has already been confirmed no. Knuckles will be an assist trophy. Uh, yeah, I mean it's neat, and that uh, well, we'll talk about it more. When we, we will get yeah, 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 we'll stuff, get to it. But um, uh, just really quick, yeah, the fact that it's Knuckles being shown off as as the assist trophy and Echo Fighters in the game makes a big question mark. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, there's a certain black hedgehog that was an assist made, trophy previously. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Man, I would still rather. Uh, have you ever heard Chris's nickname for Shadow? Uh, I have not. Black guy, the hedgehog. <laughs> He's like, oh, he's packing is, heat and riding a motorcycle. Great. The funny thing is, when I think of Shadow, I just think giant edgelord. And so that doesn't really get into my brain, the fact that, like, yeah, he has a gun. Yeah, he rides a motorcycle. I just think uh, either him cursing about Chaos Emeralds or going, Maria! Maria! <laughs> I will stop them for you! Okay, anyway. I've, uh, I've, 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 I've one really quick thing. Go for we it. Can move on. Uh, I remember at one time at a party, we were mentioning... Uh, we mentioned Sonic Adventure 2 at one point. Yeah. And then I, me and one other person did word for word the faker scene with <laughs> each other. Huh. You're not even good enough to be my fake. I'm making those words. <laughs> Have you? Yeah, you I love that. Yeah. yourself to me? Ha huh. ha. <laughs> it's so <laughs> like an answer. Ha. <laughs> Shadow became a gentleman for a second. Um, to to their credit, the guy who voiced right uh, Eggman in those games, I saw he was in Paranoia Agent and he was fantastic. Neat. He was the cr- the crooked cop, the call me daddy one. Because you guys watch that show. Um, okay, <laughs> yeah, I'm guessing that. Sorry if you remember that. Um, no, no, it's just that uh, my brain's going at a million. So, if I'm in Gen N mode, I can easily recall episodes. But since this is technically just a, not like, that. something completely yeah. different, like my brain is not in generation animation mode right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're, we've already gone some crazy tangents, and we've got a lot of stuff to cover. So let's start. Out, so we have three things we're going to talk, um, and I'll get the more one-sided one out of the way because so we're recording this on Thursday, the June fourteenth, and uh, I guess I'm, well, obviously by the time this episode comes out, it'll be publicly out. But last night, Wednesday the thirteenth, I took the opportunity when I saw a local theater near me was doing a special IMAX screening of both the original The Incredibles and an early screening of Incredibles 2. Superheroes are illegal. We want to fight bad guys. I use the bad guys. It defines who I am. We're not saying you have... What? Someone on TV said it. And I absolutely had to leak at this... Leap, not leak, leap at this opportunity yes, because... Uh, yeah, uh, inc- for the record, uh, John will not be spoiling anything. Because yes, no, I would not. I- I'm going to be seeing this movie on Sunday, so I don't want to know anything going we, on. We, so we, I think sometimes we do movies podcast if it's the focus of the episode, like Infinity War, but if it's just one of these opening things, then no, we'll keep things vague. And yeah, I'll keep things vague. But so Incredibles, for the record, is my favorite. The first one is my favorite Pixar movie ever. Like, I've loved plenty of their movies, and like, I think you and me both, Coco was probably the hardest we've ever cried at a Pixar movie. Uh, oh god the thing is Pixar like everyone t- uh, when it came to Coco everyone except oh man you're gonna cry so hard yeah and Coco's been out long enough where I can kind of spoil it I think especially because oh. it's on Netflix for those yeah okay, yes, I was gonna say Coco's on Netflix you have no excuse not to watch it now yes so when 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 the scene where um, the person who is his father the the scout I forget all the characters names it's been a while since I've watched it like he he starts to fade away and die it's like oh that's the scene I'm supposed to cry at okay I'm not crying <laughs> And but then, then like, oh, no, he goes back to Coco. 
that's not the scene. It's nope. it's it's the remember me guitar scene. I'm like, damn, you got me. And then and the last song going, happens and kept going. <laughs> yeah, kept going. I I I did a Tumblr post recently. You're thinking about uh, Hector, the the ancestor, my favorite character. For me, yeah. the scene that broke me was during the last song, where that one shot of him crossing the bridge and his face gets this look of like stu- stupefied joy, and I was just like shaking. And I remember I did joke that you're recreation of how you were crying during it sounded like the cowardly lion like <laughs> <laughs> yeah because the thing is i was trying not to ball watching it yeah uh, it's like, it's crazy thing chris picked coco as his favorite movie of last year he didn't cry once huh. meanwhile his wife says she cried for like half the movie so i don't know <laughs> but i'm the guy who didn't cry inside out toy story 3 so i'm not one to talk uh but yeah incredibles so yes incredibles is my favorite pixar movie because yeah, it's not a tearjerker, and neither is this for the record, but a picture of me doesn't have to, have to be super emotional to be fantastic, and Brad Bird is, like, we did a whole episode, one of our earliest episodes was devoted to the Iron Giant. This guy is kind of my idol because his first movie was what motivated me to look at animation more seriously and really love it, and it's also the the big thing. This is his first cartoon in over a decade, so, because for the record, his filmography is Iron Giant, The First Incredibles, Ratatouille, also fantastic. Then he went and did Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, which was very good, um, just not what you expected. And then he did Tomorrowland, which I did, which I skipped and I heard kind of mixed things about. But he has been saying I, I like Tomorrowland aesthetically. But yeah, I her writing wise, and I'm just kind of like, eh. Yeah, but um, and but this he had teased this movie for a long time because people point out it's been 14 years this is crazy this is even longer than it took Finding Dory but here's the thing he was like people are asking him like within two or three years of the first Incredibles do you want to do another can you do another he's like I do want to do another I'm planting the seeds in my brain of ideas but I have to wait until the whole story is ready because Brad Bird is a super look him up because he is a super perfectionist he is adamant in trying to make the best cartoons people can and people take it more seriously like he cares so much for the art of cartoons and filmmaking in general, which is why he did live action too. So it makes sense that it took this long. And oh, so, so um, I'll put my my opinion right here on the table. It is not quite as amazing as the first Incredibles, but I fucking loved it. I'm just no two ways around it. I had a ball with this movie. And, and actually, I know you guys talked the Incredibles early on, and I think you guys yeah, were more the, like it I than I distinctly Mother. remember the thing about the Incredibles episode is like literally the day after we recorded it, my laptop exploded, yes. and that was uh, that was the first time we had to miss a week of Gen N because you had to recover uh, the file. Yeah, because luckily I was able to recover it from my dead hard drive. Yeah. Um, but the the funny thing is, like even having not seen it, I'm just gonna put this out there. It would be really hard for Incredibles 2 to top the first one because I think the stuff that made the first Incredibles great, it, you can't really retread that stuff. The marital issues, the really toxic sidekick. You not can't just that. really redo that. Yeah, well, not just that. And no, they don't do that. But I mean, I remember because last night was also the first time I'd watched the original Incredibles all in one go in a while. I have it on DVD and uh, Amazon HD and I rewatched parts of it. I remember the big thing that sticks with me is when the arguments about, you know, hiding your talents, like one of my favorite exchanges in the whole movie is, you know, Helen confronting Bob and talking about like, this is psychotic. You keep coming up with new ways to celebrate mediocrity and um, just these big kind of hard to like, that's what I like. It's not a very black and white issue. And that those things always fascinate me. That's why I think X-Men has been such a persevering franchise. That is such a conflict where moral shades of gray on from every angle. And um, so, th- so the two the two downsides I would say about Incredibles two is that it does not have heavier topics like that, and it's also I I thought Incredibles one was a is a very dark movie for, by Pixar standards. At that point, you have a suicide attempt in the first five minutes. You have old superheroes getting killed and stuff like that. These are like people getting killed, not like cartoony like yeah the, yeah really no, it's like henchmen getting too. blown up. Like it feels like a real action movie, and I'm trying to remember. Okay, I, I mean. I, it's not a dark. I'm, I'm trying to remember if there was even any death in this movie, and I want to say no, unless there's stuff, some Nothing small stuff in this. Super visual, although the implication of Syndrome's death is very cruel. cruel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, they're. They. they. I don't want to say anything about the villains, but yeah, there's nothing on that level. However, so so that those I say would say are the main things that keep it back from being as near perfect as the original. It's just not quite as much to digest on past the surface level. However, and I'll also say, so the first ten movies, so do you know about how, where this movie starts? Um, honestly, no. I've kind of purposely been avoiding most of the okay. trailers because I kind of want to go into this fresh. Uh, this is a minor, minor thing. I'll is just... like, a, is like a, 
on Twitter, there's an ad about Jack Jack and eggs, and like that's literally okay. all I really. This is think. a minor spoiler. The very first, it it literally starts where the first movie ends with the Underminer attacking and them getting back into the fray. So you, the movie starts with that fight. Neat. And uh, now, while the original had an optimistic ending about the future of Supers without being definite, definitive, this shows after you know the aftermath of this, there's still there's still some obstacles in the way, and there are new characters introduced who actually do have the pull to possibly get supers back in the limelight and get get them approved again but then they choose elastigirl as the uh you know the initial flagship person and i will say i know that i had heard that they were treating this as helen parr as the main character this time around rather than bob uh oddly enough i kind of felt by the end of this movie this is really about the whole family not just helen not just bob there are certain chunks of this movie that they really devote to one of those five over the others, even Jack Jack. Um, which, depending on how you felt about each of those characters in the first one, if you had favorites over them, maybe that'll make you sad. I it, it didn't for me. Because the and, thing about the first movie, it's like it was pretty much just like the main couple, and like yeah, like um, yeah, like the other the kids were were focused and had some really good scenes. Like the running, the chase scene is still one yeah. of my favorites. Yeah, this time Pixar Violet has a whole sequences. subplot. Yeah. Um, as does Jack Jack. I know he's a baby, but if you saw, if you remember how that first movie ended and saw the trailers, yes. you know he still manages to bring up a dilemma, which um, and uh, Dad doesn't quite have a have a have a subplot yet either. But he's still playing off these really well. Um, so when this first scene started with the Underminer stuff, like I was enjoying it, and also this really seeing them back to back really did make you realize how much because I still think the first movie looks really good, but this makes you realize how much further. Pixar and CG has come in terms of detail, like the lighting from day, from, I mean, from second one is out of this world, like bloom and subtle shading, and you can also see like there's more detail and range of the characters, like skin skin tone, like there's just it's just the natural progression of technology and animation techniques. But um, and it doesn't, it, I feel like it still wouldn't take you out of the movies if you watch them back to back. But it's 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 there, and it's impressive that they still managed to capture the feel of the first movie. Because one thing I only found out recently. And it makes sense. Apparently, the movies take place in a parallel 1962. Are you aware of this? I, I knew the aesthetic was similar to it. I didn't yeah. know if it actually took place in that timeline. Yeah, I just assumed somebody it was pointed a- out in the first movie when Mr. Carroll's looking at paper, it has like some. It's it, the year is 62. It's just that it's a little more vague because there's like yeah, the design aesthetic of the furniture and, and TVs and stuff makes makes sense. But there's like technology in this that we still don't have, so you kind of have to view it as. I heightened alternate 60s, um, which doesn't surprise me because Iron Giant also took place in the 50s. I, Brad Bird grew up during that time, and I'm sure, I'm sure it means a lot to him. Um, so, yes, yeah, so this opening Underminer scene, I was like, this is fun, this is cool, but it's not quite as funny or as action or as good with its action as that first movie. But the moment that stops and the main plot kicks in, I was in until the credits rolled. Like, they handled pacing and character and and cinematography and writing and animation and stuff just super super well um like i i liked these new characters like the uh the 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 the, and great choices for the uh new voice actors too uh i guess someone's a breaking bad fan because bob odenkirk plays uh he and Catherine keen are the two siblings who run the company that are trying to get things going there you know so they get a lot of screen time they're both good Uh, minor teeny aside and i'm just gonna say this and then you can keep moving on but Every time anyone mentions Bob Odenkirk, for some reason my brain goes right to Steve Odenkirk, uh, who is the man behind Kung Pao and the Fist. And Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> and Jimmy Neutron. I yeah. actually – mine does too. I actually don't know if they're related or not. Um, but yeah, he's he's fun. Catherine Keener is good. Uh, and also a smaller thing. Do you remember in the first movie that older government agent who was kind of Bob's friend who would cover up every time they did something oh, crazy? Yeah. That actor died, so they replaced him with Jonathan Banks. I mean – yeah, and he just still does a good job. I mean, obviously they got another kid for Dash, but he still blends in. All the other old actors are back, and they're great. Uh, I'm just trying to look at some of my notes. Even like they get even better with. I did kind of miss the vibe that the island headquarters f- brought from the first movie because this is all more you know urban or like shoreside stuff uh, or suburban. But it it looks wonderful. They get they they move to a new house midway through, which is like. I just want I would love like some sort of special feature to just walk around that house. It looks so cool, and the features are so imaginative and beautiful so the only other and it also it, what i guess i'm complaining about it not being as dark or substantial and not a spoiler but this is another movie that 
hides the villain's identity for two thirds of the movie, like Disney likes to do, Pixar likes to do. Uh, it's not a super surprising reveal considering you can ca- I counted the number of possible characters on one hand, and their motivation wasn't as interesting as Syndrome Two, but they still have good moments once you know the the mask comes off. Uh, also, we, but this sorry, we're gonna say something. Uh, just like I'm not, I'm not gonna spoil anything. No, no, but um, I had this conversation about like villain reveals and how like you got to be really careful with them because you got to make them not obvious, but at the same time, you got to make it seem like seeds are planted. Yeah, because you didn't like that about Frozen, that there were no seeds planted. Because it's it's such a hard 180 for Hans. <laughs> and that's what I loved about guy. it. But Zootopia, you can you can see the seeds yeah, when you Zootopia look back. Yeah, Zootopia works perfectly with that. Same with Coco as well, but I can't spoil – I want to spoil that. Yeah, um, Coco does it really well too. Yeah, but I, I, am, I, I still am wishing they'd just start to do more – introduce the villain from the beginning and go with it because you get great villains like Jafar and Ursula and Scar like that. Um, yeah, but at the same time, then you get some... I hated How to Drain Your Dragon 2. That villain uh, was pretty weak. Yeah. Uh, that I uh, just not a good villain. There's, well, they're doing... They're trying again with uh, 3 with F. Murray Abraham. We'll see how it goes. I feel like I was the only person not hyped for 3, especially because it seems like the main storyline for 3 is, hey, Toothless is gonna fuck. It's... But, the like, fact I, I'm, it's giving me this Pickable 3 vibes that you're introducing a palette swap of a main character, but <laughs> yes. it'll probably be better than that. Um, I mean, that's going to be the plot of Pojo Transylvania 3, so too. I might give it a shot. Yeah. So I've mentioned my complaints, but I've, look, I I really need to need to explain. I, I'm, I'm worried at this point making it sound like it's not very good. This movie is hilarious. Like, the first one had a lot of moments of good humor. This one goes more for it, and pretty much everything is a bullseye. Like, my theater, there is... This is one of those movies that has a joke that left my audience laughing for like 30 seconds after it happened. I'll just say it involves Violet in a restaurant and leave it at that. And also, it does what you should do with a good sequel, that it it continues to build on its characters and world. We actually get to see other supers besides them in Frozone. And yes, they are minor roles, but they do some creative action scenes and humorous moments with their powers and even some of their personalities. And uh, what's another thing? I'd say that once the some of the action gets going in the second half, it's some of it's I would say is even better than a lot of the stuff in the first movie. Uh, and like I said, the pacing is on point. The the characters they are allowed to grow more because Bob is out of his element. Uh, Helen is balancing returning to the limelight when she was saying they shouldn't and worrying about her family. Violet they they build on her her you know burgeoning adolescence and love life that the first movie teased at. Jack Jack, how's everybody react to finally seeing these powers in person? I will say both Edna Mode and Frozone are in it less than I than I'd wish they would be, but they they don't nothing they do still feels, you know, uh, not faithful to what we know about them. They still get laughs. And, and, and to be fair to the original Frozone, other than the first and last big sequences of the film, don't doesn't really do pretty much anything. the same thing here. Yeah, and I feel like E's screen time might be even less, which is a shame because she still delivers some of the biggest laughs. And you know, you know her voice is her, right? Um, not off the top of my head right it's now. It's Brad Bird. Oh, neat. <laughs> Assuming that little angry German, whatever she is, woman. Apparently she's inspired by like a real fashion designer for like Hitchcock. There is a, there is an, um, there, oh, man, I, I watched this not that long ago. Um, she is an illegitimate fashion designer, really well known for stuff in Europe. Uh, they had her on an episode of Project Runway, and that's literally all I could think about looking Was at it her. Was it as the cartoon with Brad Bird voicing her? No, like the actual, like, Oh, person. oh, I thought she was dead. Okay, wow. Like, no, because it's Project Runway, so this was probably, like, 10, 15 years ago. Oh, you know, it's been on that long. Project Runway's been on for a long time. I did not know that, even though my mom marathons it. Uh, That's my mom's main pastime, is (laughs) reality shows. It was, like, E's, like, main... Not E, uh... What... Bravo's, like, main thing Yeah, I can tell you the network. Um, But, yeah, like, Incredibles 2. Like, so I'll just... I'll bring it to a close by saying, yeah, I think that the fact that it's not quite as dark or deep as the first one is the main thing holding back for me, but... Other than that, like, I was going into this because the reviews have been super positive. I was like, I don't need to be as good as the first. Just give me a great movie. And they succeeded with flying colors. I cannot see many people walking out of this more dissatisfied than happy about it. It was a total blast. Maybe more of a popcorn movie, so it shift from that to that more comedic. It might disappoint people a little bit. But everything else I loved about this, that first movie, Brad Bird returned on it, even built on it in some ways. I would say... It is probably the best Pixar sequel that is not that is not Toy Story related. So yeah, Felipe, go see it. Anybody who is interested, go see it. Uh, there's not much more to say about Incredibles two without getting into spoilers. Maybe I'll talk about it more later down the line. But yeah, it's so 
I would say it's a generally worthy successor. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I got slightly distracted. I decided to open Tumblr for no reason, and you uh, just posted an interesting GIF of Zelda and Mario, or Link and Mario. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I li- I'd like to do shit posts, and somebody guessed, posts, I guess they use like a machinima of Mario and Link just starting to like French kiss. It's so goofy. <laughs> I mean, I'm, it is, is Pride Month, there. isn't it? It is. Um, there you go. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on in, like in terms of media and stuff that everyone's freaking out about in Pride Month. Well, uh, including one certain character that made his debut return at E3, uh, and her as well for talking about gay characters. <laughs> Yes. Uh, but yeah, good, very, very good segue, Felipe. So as of this recording, E3 2018 is coming to a close, and uh, so we have some individual titles we want to talk about and reveals. Uh, I had two in particular, but Felipe, let's 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 go back and forth. What was the first game you wanted to focus on? Uh, I really wanted to talk about the new uh, Sony Spider-Man game. Oh, I am pumped. Um, this is too good to be true. Scorpion, can you hold on a minute? I was in the middle of a phone call and it was business. Ah! Yeah, they showed an extended gameplay uh, trailer. Yep. Uh, I will say a lot of people are kind of complaining that it's looking very Arkham-y, but Oh, uh, I the- tweeted Spider-Man Arkham Asylum, but that is that there's it's going to be open no, world, but, but there is it's for a while. And to yeah. be honest, the Spider-Man combat is very inspired by it. like Spider-Man the entire time, let's be real. Like the way the spider sense works in order to react to certain combat things makes complete and total sense. Yeah. Um the and the for- the chase sequence looks phenomenal. Do you mean when he's uh, running up the wall and they're shooting lasers at him? He has to, like, yeah, duck because to the sides? Yeah, that's, that's gameplay. Like, you that's, can react. <laughs> it's out of the new Sonic games, the quick step. Yes, it's pretty much it. Except, like, unlike the Sonic quick step, you have time to react. Though. Yeah, it slows down. <laughs> but uh, but uh, what I think is super neat about it is the character designs here. We knew that Spider-Man had that. The, you see the suit with the white trim and things like that. It's right. like, oh, that's a neat, little, cute little redesign for this version of Spider-Man. But like, Rhino looks different. Scorpio looks different. Electro, that that has to be an actor face capped, right? Like, I I think they've done some mocap for it, but I cannot verify that. Uh, because like the way he talks and the way the way when the camera zooms in, it's like. Okay, that's not a model. That's just a face. Well, Sony uh, does that a lot with their games. Uncharted and Last of Us did it. I just played Beyond. I mean, no, I mean, I'm sorry. I just played Detroit. That does, Quantic Dream does it. It's pretty common nowadays. Yeah, but it it, it, it really gives this feel of like semi-realism to the Spider-Man world. Mm-hmm. And I love the banter. Uh, I believe this is the same Spider-Man that's been voicing him in all the fighting games as of late. Uh, I can't. Uh, I'm trying to remember. It was. I think it's Yuri Lowenthal. Yeah. And he does a great job as Spider-Man here. Yeah, I actually uh, haven't played any games past Spider-Man 2 and Ultimate, so I can verify that. But uh, yeah, so but what I've the, seen so far, I, he does As a fighting that. game player who who recognizes... Oh, is he, like, an, is he an MVC? He's an MVC, both Infinite and 3. Okay. And so it's the same voice actor, and he does a great... And he's a fantastic Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. Yuri Lowenthal has done a bunch of stuff. I think I mainly know him from Saints Row, actually. <laughs> yes, and uh, there's a there's a bunch of dy- there's a dynamic uh, web swinging section that they showed off at E3 as well. Mm-hmm. Um, web swinging has also always been the one thing about Spider-Man games that would make or break it. That's why uh, everybody loves Spider-Man Two so much. Yeah, the PlayStation version is great. Spider-Man Two on PS2, maybe not so much. Um, but like that's actually what makes me kind of curious because. Everything looked fantastic, but everything also was like other than the fight sequence stuff in the in the island seemed very scripted. Chase Electro, and then like yeah, yeah Chase well, I'm, it's going to be an open world can... game, so like most of those, the missions will be more scripted than the side stuff. But that's what the thing about Spider-Man games is: the most fun you can have is just kind of traveling. Well, I can tell you that I have listened to Red Tips, some people like Game Informer who had hands on. They've been saying like. They're making a lot of smart decisions because I know people said like, so what happens if you're swinging and you like, you know, bump the the corner of a building and you crash into it? And basically, it turns out um, Insomniac, the Ratchet and Clank people are making this for a lot of like stairwells and like lamp posts. They have little pre done animations. He'll just climb around those automatically. That's neat. I actually didn't know this was an Insomniac game. Until oh, that just was now. that's been in, when they first announced it. They showed they showed their logo, then yeah, Marvel. Literally yeah. in every trailer is just like Marvel Spider Man. Yeah, no, yeah. this is them trying something different, and it's it, it's the fact that people it, the impressions still seem positive and it looks good. 
it also makes me excited for Marvel because they've been saying, like, this is not, this has never been tied to any of the movies. It's an original story, kind of like how Arkham isn't tied to any specific comic. They're like, we're trying to let good developers and publishers do stuff with our properties and not be tied down by those movie deadlines. Because that's why 99% of movie tying games suck. They got rushed. To be honest, that's why Marvel Infinite really failed, too. They had to cut out a bunch of characters and, yeah. Yeah, like, like, yeah, cut out all these characters. We got to focus on the movies. Uh, like, one of the problems. We listen to yeah. our uh, Sam and Max episode for his thoughts. Yeah, I talked a lot about how Marvel Infinite, fantastic fighting game, terrible game. Yeah, but uh, so the other big thing that I noticed people were hoping to see was, uh, I believe it's Crystal Dynamics. The Tomb Raider people are making an Avengers game. And yeah, there, there was nothing on it that I saw. No, no, there wasn't anything. They just announced it last year, and maybe they'll, maybe in between this E3 and the next one, we'll see it. Or maybe at next E3, games take, take time sometimes, especially from yeah. Square Enix. But which I'm, is it okay? We, am, go ahead. I am really happy though that you mentioned that this was uh, this is the Ratchet and Clank people because there's one really like Ratchet and Clank, like yeah, it's technically not a platformer Spider-Man, but if you consider the movement options that you have in that the game. Shot. Yes, yeah, things like the swing shot, like it makes total sense. Also, I'll go a deeper cut. Did you ever play Sunset Overdrive? I did not. I've heard that, great things about it. That is I've like my favorite it. Xbox One exclusive, and I wish it sold better because it sounds like they're not doing anything else with it. But that was the first time Insomniac did something that was not that was an Xbox exclusive, and I think that even more planned the seeds because it's an open world weapon based game, but there are no vehicles. Your character can parkour, grind on rails, uh, swing on telephone poles. I think that might have been the proof of concept when they went to Marvel and like, hey, we can do this. Like, look at footage. You'll see, like, yeah, these guys can do Spider Man, and that game was a blast to play. So gives me a lot of hope for this yeah um, but like and, i like the trailer i'm i think the story is being executed really well i think the spider-man characterization is done really well mm-hmm. uh, like the scene where scorpion grabs spider-man's face and it's like can you hold on for a second i'm on a call right now oh it, that's, it, it, that's it, spidey it feels really spider-man yeah uh, and that's the it, only thing i'm scared about is i wonder how the open world's going to work but now that i know that spider-man i'm a uh, that it's insomniac i'm a little less concerned now <laughs> you first said now that i know that this spider-man game has spider-man man i'm on board <laughs> i thought it was going to be about i don't know captain america swinging around new york <laughs> i'm sorry um but yeah so let's uh, can I, it's okay if i say my first one yeah yeah, yeah. go ahead yeah, um, i was just gonna say i i'm a little i'm looking forward to it That's yeah all and it'll be out really soon so you'll have your curiosity stated one way or another my first there were two ones I've had two ones I've been saying about for a while that I knew were going to get a big focus. Let's talk about, if you're a Nintendo fan, the big ones, uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Every Super Smash Bros. fighter ever is in this game, whether they were originally DLC or only appeared once in the past. We believe that's what players want, so we made the impossible possible. Everyone, Everyone is back. Everyone is here. <laughs> Everyone is here. What a hook. What a obvious yet I never thought about it, and it's so satisfying hook. And there's probably going to be more hooks beyond that. They said they're going to reveal more, but um, they, they, you have, they said that they don't expect too many new fighters. Yeah, yeah, there, don't, there won't be as many, but there's, they, there will still be more. They, we've, we have three now, and we know for the record, it's uh, Inkling Daisy, who's a Peach clone, and Ridley. Uh, yes. Holy shit! That was when I was watching the direct. I was saying out loud, like they, they did it. They said they yeah, would never do it. They, they, they never they did, did it because they, the main thing Sakurai said is that they didn't want to diminish the character of Ridley by shrinking him down to fit in yeah, Smash Play. Yeah, style. Ridley's gigantic. But for me, I think I was like, you just got to shrink. You mainly need to shrink his wings. His wings are ridiculously huge. And if you look at his model, they did. Yes. But I'm like, shrunken Ridley is better than no Ridley. And uh, I th- there's a bunch of things about the new Smash that, I, like, the fact that they're they're naming the words Echo Fighters, it, it plays with the idea of, like, okay, so... You're aware of what you're doing that, and you're teasing the idea of bringing in more. Mm-hmm. And there's so many little things you could do, like Ryu with Ken. We brought up Sonic and Shadow earlier. I, wa- uh, I still want Dixie Kong. She could be a Diddy Kong with some minor modifications. Yeah, that works too. I saw some people saying uh, Funky Kong instead of Donkey Kong too. I'm a big DK fan, for the record. I, 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 uh, like, like Dixie Kong makes total sense. Funky, I, I think just as a skin, I think would be good. He got a bonus me. mode, man. He was selling it. <laughs> Great memes, what, great you just got on the surfboard and you never go into the blast zone? Yeah, <laughs> obviously. He's for uh, newcomers. He's easy mode. <laughs> yes. I just oh, want to see a smash box art with on the corner bonus funky mode. Yeah. There's a bunch of little things that have been told. Like, basically, the, the, they talked about a lot. Oh, they've like got the in-depth. And it was all super promising and smart. Like, the fact that when you have characters who have meters and ammo, like Cloud's uh, Limit Break or Robin's Tomes, you get the meters Robin for those now. The Robin thing is huge because literally if you were a Robin player, you never knew when you were going to Yeah, run. that is so smart. 
like it's not just like the everybody's here and still new characters and levels and like you know kind of that you can kind of view it as a best of but they're making a lot of smart little streamlining adjustments that are going to make for a better experience yeah and as someone who comes from the fighting community background uh they're they're catering a lot with little things the, the, beyond Omega mode now there's a battlefield mode for every stage so smart and so smart and they there's, just, cause there's they, so many levels i love the, the just a quick thing there's so many smash levels i love the aesthetics of but not playing them like the arcade donkey kong level but if you play them in omega or battlefield no problem yeah but there's one more thing that they snuck in during one of the tree houses that oh what they treated like no big deal you could turn hazards off oh um, like the uh, yellow devil yeah, like uh, basically, if you watch the Smash Brothers Invitational tournament they had, they played on Saffron City from N64. Yeah. But if you notice, there was no 2D Charmander throwing fire at you the whole time. So. And that's because hazards were turned off. Did they confirm that? They confirmed it on th- at the treehouse. And okay. uh, there were I still. players in- invited, and there was a toggle. Basically, on the E3 show floor, they just had a for fun. That's for great, because I would love to turn off. Hey, wait, if you play that uh, that Wii U level where Ridley shows up and he's there and you're playing as him, I wonder if they'll alter it. Because the Spirit Tracks level, if you play on 3DS, if you play it as 2 Link, another character would be driving the train. Yeah, so like hazards are going to be off for people that want to play on That's these awesome. big stages That's but awesome. don't want to just play on a flat ground and don't want to deal with hazards. Yeah, and I'm still wondering, like, I'll bet there's still going to be some sort of new mode, because, you know, uh, Brawl had Subspace yeah, Emissary, Melee had Adventure Mode. Yeah, specifically gameplay, and so I feel like they're saving, like, uh, other stuff for later. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the, the Smash Tour thing, I agree that it was kind of an underwhelming new thing compared to what came before. I, I am I was a big Subspace fan, and I'm still love them to do some sort of, even if it's a shorter I, sort of campaign. I kind of secretly wish now that Break the Targets isn't Angry Birds anymore, and it's legit break the targets. <laughs> like, huh? Yeah, they should. Break, I would be okay with target platform and stuff back too. Those are fun little sides, and I'm sure there there will be a classic mode where they'll incorporate something like that. And I'm I'm also I'm always curious to see what the both regular and assist trophies are. Yes, uh, assist trophies like they like. There's a bunch that they didn't announce at the direct, but if you watch everywhere else, whether it's like those little character yeah, I saw crystal character videos they put on YouTube. Yeah, crystals there. We brought up knuckles earlier mm-hmm. with Pokemon. Freaking uh, during one of the, during one of the invitational free for all matches that they had a bunch of fans come up and play. A Lolan Raichu is a freaking Pokeball. Oh, like, nice! What? <laughs> he just surfs around the screen on his tail. Yeah, I still honestly, I know it's a it's a weird one. If I could pick any one Pokemon to be playable, it'd be, it'd be Meowth. He's just so iconic. Uh, but he's been a, a Pokeball since Oh, for, Yeah, I know. I'm not saying I expect <laughs> it. But I didn't expect Ridley, so there you go. Um, yeah. And, yeah, so we're really excited. And not a long wait. It's coming out in December. Yes. So, I, I am not uh, a Switch owner, but once I'm done with my CEO trip and going to Florida Supercon next month, yeah. I am buying the Switch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I also recommend... There are already a bunch of good games I recommend. Oh, Zelda. yeah, I know. There's a bunch of stuff on Switch that I want to play already. Like, freaking when Bayo 3 comes out, I'm going to be playing that the hell. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Freaking yeah, Odyssey, Breath of the Wild. I would, uh, I would honestly Kart. also recommend Xenoblade <laughs> 2 and Mario Rabbids. And actually, you mentioned Bayonetta. Let's maybe we can segue to a similar uh, game yes. uh, that you are excited for. That was finally announced. Style. Yes, Devil Devil May Cry Five was announced by Capcom. Yeah, he's a real pro at smacking demons yeah. around. That's why I built him that well functioning arm <laughs> to kick demon ass. Finally, uh, this is this is the first true Devil May Cry sequel in a about decade, ten years. Yeah, because yes. and for the record, I did not hate DMC. No, uh, I, that's one of the only ones I played. It, I did seem good for what it was, but you know, it wasn't a proper sequel, and the, people the didn't like the new design. The thing about DMC gameplay wise, it was perfectly fine. It was good. It was fun. Storytelling wise, it was okay. You but could tell it was in different problem, hands. Yeah, but my main problem is the characterization of those characters was pretty handled pretty badly, and they randomly decided let's just take a few random shots and stabs at the original franchise. It's like that one's lame. You want to play this one? Yeah, like oh, white hair, no way. <laughs> yes. And so, uh, for the record, I think the most interesting thing about DMC5, it's legitimately a DMC5. That's Nero that's uh, throughout the freaking trailer. Yeah, now, I've only played a little bit of the first game and the reboot, but I know about Nero, and because he was, basically, Devil May Cry 4 was split between him and Dante, right? Yeah, you play the first half of the game as Nero, and then you literally go backwards through the game again as Dante. Okay, and they've said, I know they've said there are going to be three characters total, so him, Dante, and someone new, right? Yes, uh, it could be any. It could be Trish. It could be Virgil. It could be who knows. Who's the one in the second game? That's Dante and two as well. No, there was oh, a, there was a girl in the second game. You oh yeah, as. I don't know. I never played two. On yeah, nobody liked to. 
Nobody liked to. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's most likely going to be either Trish or Virgil, unless it's a brand new character, which I'm down for, honestly. Or it could be freaking DMC Dante, for all we know. Who oh cares? my god, they're going to do, like, Sonic Forces. Create your own devil! <laughs> and the character doesn't talk. He just goes, hmm, ah, oh. Oh god, there's so many... I know you've done, like, multiple talks on Sonic Forces. I did a video wanna... about how I liked the game, but the story was garbage. And I remember back when you had you on, I was talking about how dumb Infinite looked, and you were like, no, no, they know they're being stupid. It's gonna be ton in cheek No. That's what I thought, and it seemed like... The thing I wish. Is, here's the thing, in execution, like, they played it 100% straight, and that yeah. was a problem. That's the problem, like, yeah! Like, you're trying to make a Dark Sonic game again while the character is still cracking wise, and it's just dumb. Like, the thing is, if, if you take Infinite as a tongue-in-cheek character, I fucking love him. His freaking edgelord theme, yeah. and his mask and dramaticness. His voice. The fact voice. that when you take the mask off, he has two freaking I eyes am not star. weak! <laughs> <laughs> but, like, if you play him for real reels, then all of a sudden he just becomes lame. Yeah. But, <laughs> but Devil May Cry 5. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> but the, the great thing about DMC 5 from aesthetically, like, the thing is, DMC looked semi-realistic as well, but yeah. all the other Devil May Cry games have this like faux like Japanese anime CG look. To yeah, it. yeah, very kind of manga uh, yeah. exaggerated. Yes, they've actually openly said that they've scanned real life people in costume to get the look and aesthetic. So uh, I know that DMC was mocap as well. Yes, yeah, so they they did that with with Devil May Cry Five, which is why the characters look very realistic, save for a little bit of questionable hair. All right, I will um, ask you this. Because I remember you mentioning this. I didn't watch the trailer. Does Dante still look like Steve Buscemi? Dante looks weird. You ever see the the cover of World of Warcraft with the white-haired guy? (laughs) He looks like that? No, because Dante looks... I don't know. He's older. He has, has like, facial hair. Mm -hmm. He still looks cocky as hell. But the thing is, it's it's four seconds. And I can't really... Have they said that this takes place a couple years after four? They haven't set a timeline. It's clearly after four because they even show a, a scene in the in the in the trailer. The whole reason Nero has that story is that his left arm is t- is a devil arm. It's part of Virgil. All this stuff. He loses that arm, and so that's why he has a mechanical arm. Which is again, I wonder, is that Virgil in the cloak? I was really hoping uh, you were going to say it was Liquid Snake's arm. <laughs> he starts talking like Leonardo. Hello, brother. Oh, God. That's um, <laughs> snakes and smash. Yeah, uh, yeah and, and David Hayter again, too. Yeah, David Hayter's back for it. I, God, I met I Hayter at AwesomeCon back. last year. Nice guy. Otacon, there's a dragon here. Mei Ling, <laughs> Samus took her clothes off. <laughs> oh, God. Those codec calls are fantastic. Bro. I've actually, it's still, they might be returning because somebody asked some of the uh, localization guys for Smash. They're like, they, they, they confirmed David Hayter's back. They actually could not... They were themselves weren't sure about, like, if they're going to be able to do Codex for all the new characters. It could happen. We might just get the old ones. We'll see. Yes. I hope so. <laughs> but... Yeah, okay. but the main we'll, thing about DMC5, really quick. Yeah. Uh, combat-wise, it looks and plays like a Devil May Cry game. Right. Really, that's all you could ask for. Especially after so long. Yes. The, the fun to be able to chain combos, like gun, sword gun, air juggles, things like that. I'm excited for it. And the funny thing is, I'm not even a huge Devil May Cry fan. Like, I played one, three, and a little bit of four. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the 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 presentation, the fact that they have basically Metal Gear Rising music, <laughs> like because Nero is kind Cry. of the riding equivalent. <laughs> yes, and like basically, and I freaking loved Revengeance for the record. I played um, some of it. Yeah, like those kind of fun character action games. I am all for. Between that and, and Bayonetta three, like you said, you've got some good times in the future. Yes, and so I'm very much looking forward to and how Devil May Cry play, plays And out. it's funny you should mention Raiden because his uh, voice actor has happened to play a character named Axel who is returning in, as a good guy in my most anticipated game of all time, recently delayed to January 2019. You're following her. Maybe she's one of the seven pure lights we need. The new seven hearts. <sighs> now, set your heart free. Uh, that would be Kingdom March 3. Uh, I'm sorry, it took me a second. It was a long road, I know. Especially since like, he's here's, technically... Here's the funny thing. Uh, as someone that has only played 1 and 2, you know oh, how wow. funny to see my Twitter explode with Aqua got Nord! Oh yeah, and yeah. Like, Aqua got Nord! Did you see the Pro ZD uh, video? <laughs> yes. yes. Everybody's I Norden! I think they were, there were Smash jokes about it too. They were looking at yellow-eyed characters. They got Norden! <laughs> yes. And do you have any idea what that, what that even means? 
I I read up a little bit on it. Basically, she's like a vessel for Xehanort. Uh, long Xehanort story short, she, she got possessed by Spock. Like, no, just because her eyes yellow doesn't mean she's Nordic. She's probably just consumed by the darkness, can break free because of Mickey. Blah blah blah. <laughs> That's what I love. I, I do take the game hearts a lot seriously, but I love that you just said she can be brought free of the darkness by Mickey. Because <laughs> you've still got the like. I mean, to be fair, like I grew up watching some of the old Disney shorts, but from like my teen years onward, my go-to for the Mickey crew is Kingdom Hearts because they um, are the main integral people in terms of Disney. For the most, like I really, really like Kingdom Hearts, but for some reason, when my brain goes to Mickey, um, did you ever watch any of the Paul Rudish shorts on Toon Disney? I've seen a couple; they're good. Yeah, they're super good. Uh, like basically, like those are my go-to Mickey's nowadays, especially yeah. because if you go to like Disney World and see certain merch, like. That yeah, could... they did kind of a new take on that original Pac-Man eye design. Um, yeah. I also did like the shorts they did for that House of Mouse stuff. That was pretty fun. House of Mouse is mad underrated. Yeah, I'm yeah. Saying it, that right. Way better than it should than you It was you very think hit or miss because it, it was basically a segment based with an Yeah, no, I actually story. remember thinking that some of the uh, wraparound segments weren't that funny. But the actual shorts, I was like, you, you really drew from those old ones. They're funny. Plus, I, you know, I have a soft spot for the current voice actors. So hearing like Bill Farmer and the like uh, doing modern jokes like that was really fun. But yeah, Kingdom Hearts 3. So, so yeah, I, I am a huge Kingdom Hearts fan. Um, I do intend to do it, give it its own episode someday, probably right before 3 finally launches. And I know Chris, uh, the first one is one of his legit favorite games ever. But so has... my sister, I watched her play Kingdom Hearts 1. I've actually never touched one. And we got right up to Hollow Bastion near the end, and I never saw the ending. But oh, I the game gets tough. Years later, yeah, I beat two on my own afterwards. Yeah, from two uh, onward, the default kill difficulty is a lot simpler, which I think is for the better. And the, the battle system from two onward also got just so much more fun. One's a little yeah. hard back to go back to gameplay wise, but I think it still may have the best overall story because it wasn't as complicated as it is now. Yeah, but, I own um, two Final Mix, and I was trying to to rebeat it, but then mm-hmm. after a while, it's like I'm re- I, I'm from, just because I know Final Mix has all the like new cutscenes and things like that for yeah. that weren't in the original couple but like i never finished it because of, like halfway through i'm like i don't really want to freaking grind in like freaking the coliseum or anything like that right now. <laughs> i feel like two's an easier game but i play a lot more kingdom hearts than you probably have so you know but yeah no three it's just the more and more i see about it the more i'm like this it, it's looking like what i want to be like big, aesthetically big, it's amazing uh, it's, visually, it yes, it looks. Some the, of them the look. The pirates, uh, the pirates. Holy shit! Trailer, and, and not just the the human models. Like they they put a realistic shine on Mickey uh, on Donald, Donald, Donald Goofy, Goofy, and it looks insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which they technically they did a similar thing with the uh, the Nightmare for Christmas models for them because that was meant to emulate the stop motion. But now this is like a PS4 instead of a PS2, uh, and even the ones based on cartoons. Like you look at Buzz and Woody or the Frozen Tangled characters, and it's just like. Man, technology is catching up. But also just the fact that it looks like mechanically it's going to be building in really clever ways. Like, have you heard about how Keyblade switching is going to work in this? I have not. Although one thing mechanically I could tell just by looking at the trailers, it looks like summons are elemental based. Based on Ariel being water, now Mufasa, uh, Simba Simba's fire. Uh, Ralph might be, might be ground. Um, yeah. But no, no. So... In the, if you played the original, do you remember that every time you beat a world, you'd get a new Keyblade that was generally better in either stat or magic yeah. stats? But that would mean that by the end, some, most of them would be obsolete. Here, it's different. You're going to do like the D-pad or something and switch between them. And I think Sora's stats will be independent of the Keyblades. And they're each going to have like different um, advantages and super moves. Like There are certain Keyblades that you kept even if they weren't as good because certain ones like give you more money had item draw or something like that yeah 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 yeah. but that's again returning to grind (laughs) this is something that's persistent overall like you'll be getting different you can just switch between them on the fly and so if you've seen the parts where like the monsters ink one turns into like big claw yo-yos the toy story one turns into like a rocket hammer it's like you'll be able to generally access each of those anytime the moment from the moment you get them forward which is really, really... Like they're making some smart moves, it seems. After, you know, the, like the PSP and 3DS games pretty much stuck to... Well, for the Keyblades, they took the same scene. I think they also made some cool evolutions, like the Command Deck, which is I'm, I'm going to miss. They replaced with the MP meter. It looks super fun and flashy and fluid as it should. One, uh, one quick thing, and I want yeah. you to be honest with me as a Kingdom Hearts fan. Sure. Gummy Ships. Okay. Gummy Ship, the first one was horrible. It was clunky and slow and boring. Two, Gummy Ship was not amazing, but it was actually, I found, legit fun. It was way more faster paced, way more energized, and uh, and generally didn't overstay their welcome. And this looks to be following the two style. And 
I feel I still feel like the smart thing would be for, for them to do would be to make them optional from the start and maybe just give you more item goodies if you want it, if you want to play them. But uh, assuming they'll be like the ones in two or better, I'm okay with it. I know because like I was actually so I'm not huge on reaction videos for E3. You kind of have to watch some of them because there are people like legitimately excited about. The oh, I've done a bunch for Smash and Marks, yeah. Yeah. I remember watching Maximilians and everyone's just super excited and then he sees Gummy Shoes and goes, No <laughs> Not surprising. <laughs> it could suck. I'm just, I'm not gonna lie, yeah. but they're not, uh, it's not for everyone. It's not, it's not what people play Kingdom Hearts for, so I get it. But I, I know I, I did want to mention something to you because I remember when you said before you really wanted to see the Big Hero Six world and they still haven't shown it. Yes, uh, they're, they're, I found out why. They're, they're they're seeming like they 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 didn't announce Frozen until like literally E3. And end so it pirates. seems like with the what they all, and pirates they announced that the yeah. next day. So it seems like with the exception of pirates, the, everything is based on the CG movies. And so we've had right now we have Frozen, Tangled, announced Big Hero Six, but nothing seen yet. Well, Hercules, not like Her- this. Well, well, Hercules, I feel like that's more of a staple for the Coliseum and things like that. Yeah, I don't know if they'll have a Coliseum this time though, but well, who knows? Yeah, uh, and of course Twilight Town's there because uh, we have to find Roxas. I think they said Hall uh, Bastion will exist too. Yeah. But like it also brings so if so if we're being mostly exclusive CG worlds, we could probably count out any 2D worlds co- like either coming a lot of them either. They use up most of the big ones already. Yes. Though I'm not so gonna when, lie, because the Kingdom Hearts two Aladdin level was returned to the sharp bar, I would love a King of Thieves level. Yes, and so I, I, I'm gonna pull up really quick a list of, of Disney movies that came out in the past few. Yeah, years. but what you do? Let me just clarify because they actually did. Somebody asked them about why haven't we seen Bikira Six, and they, they gave a very straightforward answer. Uh, gameplay and like model wise, that thing is done, but we haven't finished the cutscenes. That's always something we want to show off as well. So it's not that yeah. they're having trouble, but it's that they prioritize the cutscenes of other worlds too, I guess. So basically, what what hasn't came up that like, this come out in the past few years that are Disney strict, even though they're not strict Disney. Because I'm still holding on hope for Zootopia. I'll say right now. Yeah, Zoot- basically, Zootopia and Moana are like I feel like the big two that I yeah. think. I think those would both. I, I doubt they do a Moana world because because it's so water based. It would probably be too similar to uh, Pirates. But but she, the, the, also you got to keep in mind there's also volcanoes and things like that. Yeah yeah. Like, but when people when people think Moana they think the ocean. It's a plot point. Though she or Maui you could be. Fight a, alongside the rock. Yeah, but she or she or Maui could be a good uh, summon if they don't make it. Same for same for Judy. And I don't think Nick could really be a good summon. But I think Zootopia would be a great location yeah. to mess around. Zootopia even if they only restrict you. Also, because they've already basically created a Sora persona. <laughs> like, uh, the monster thing. I mean, if you're a furry, the more furry Sora is, the better. <laughs> oh, um, God. And they that also brings up a funny thing. Actually, I was gonna say really. Uh, yeah. People freaked out about Wolf's colors because he's purple, pink, and and dark black. Blue, yeah, which are the colors of the bisexual pride flag. <laughs> Wolf could <laughs> be gay. Like, we all know. Is Wolf is bi. <laughs> um, I know that. I mean, I know they said this direct. It's basically directly based off his Star Fox Zero redesign. Same with Fox and yes. Um So maybe I don't know. Axe the designer from that game. Yes, <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there because it was something that blew up on my Twitter. Man, I feel like that's something Chris would have heard about. It's funny because, uh, like, I follow so many artists on my Twitter. Mm-hmm, me too. And, like, a bit, about a third of them are, like, really good people that happen to draw and throw stuff. And so whenever a big, like, furry thing happens, it blows up my Twitter. Yeah, uh, I know Chris's wife, Serena, I don't know if she posted on Twitter. She does furry commissions often. She's But she's a really talented artist. She'll just, she'll, I think she'll change her style. And, oh, just a real quick, you just remind me, Not it's not a drawing, but... um. Did you did you see the tweet I did about Zelda's redesign for Smash? Oh, the link between worlds. Uh, I didn't see the tweet, but I will I did say the, the, I dig it a lot. Oh, I love it. She's so cute, and I was kind of bored with Twilight Princess. Anyway, no, I did the jealous girlfriend meme. Oh, <laughs> the boyfriend was Link, the old, the girlfriend was old Zelda, and the the newcomer was was nice. Zelda. <laughs> I actually saw a funny one uh, where basically uh, with Kingdom Hearts where they showed coming 2018 and it's regular Aqua and this says January 2019. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I'll say right now, if you're upset about the delay, that's fine. But I had always pegged it as like a November, December release. So two months is negligible. I'm like, we've been waiting for a decade. Two months is nothing. And somebody pointed out that the Toy Story reveal was almost a year ago. And I was like, wait, you're kidding, right? That was like half a year. I'm like, all right, we don't have to wait long. Also, I have seen uh, some of the cut. Did you see the the, uh, the gameplay videos of the Toy Story level? Uh, it, these aren't recent, right? This is like uh, maybe like a month ago. 
Yeah, then I have, yeah. Yeah, so it's not, they, they it's not some Tom, stuff it's not that, Tom Hanks yeah. and Tim Allen, but the Buzz one look like that sounds sound really good. And they, I think they did get uh, Ham and Rex's actors. Yeah, also uh, Josh Gad perf- confirmed on Twitter yes, that he that's did. him. It's Olaf. And it sounds like Adina Menzel to me, but she hasn't updated her Twitter in a while. Um, well, Adina oh, Menzel only does the singing. Oh, no, she does. No, do no, 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 she's both. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think everybody in Frozen did their speaking and singing because um, a lot of them came from Broadway. Uh, yeah, but uh, I, but no, the the thing I love about that I'm already getting a sense of at least from the Toy Story level is that there's going to be some kind of meta jabs. Because did you see Sora talking about they're doing the thing? Oh yeah, and, 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 like, um, and uh, wasn't it Rex no, that was going like, "Oh man, I love your game." <laughs> yeah, basically, the idea is that the toys they turn into there's some like action figure show for media franchise that they resemble. So Buzz, so I mean, no, so Rex is talking about like, "Man, I'm playing your game in months. Bahamut's really tough." And then it gets even better when because they do the thing that they did in the 3DS game where like each world has been split into two like parallel halves. So that's sort of like mm-hmm. that's why Jesse and the rest have disappeared. And Buzz is like, that's ridiculous. Oh, that's right. You're from a video game. Well, in real world, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I'm sure um, there's going to be more jokes with that about like uh, I mean, and in the Frozen trailer, like Anna's like, are these more friends? Off? He's like, no, I don't know anybody uh, blue, green or super spiky. So they're going to be joking about Sora's hair and stuff. The more tongue in cheek stuff I love, the better because you can keep the main story serious. But I'm fine with them being ridiculous. Like I'm the guy who, when they said, "Yeah, we're doing a steamboat Willie level," I was like, "Fuck yes!" Um, yes I'm, I'm I'm all for it. I'm 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 gonna I, buy it. I'm gonna play it. Mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just warning everybody. If you want to, you know, my in-depth analysis on the extended plot of Kingdom Hearts, you're not gonna get. It. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I I. Just side side note. I remember back when I was, you know, I'd hope they'd make it on PS3. I was like, I want an enchanted level. You go into the real world. Sora's like looks like a cosplayer, and Donald Goofy are just real animals walking around. <laughs> uh, I actually, I think I did hear they're doing an enchanted sequel, so the opportunity is still there. Uh, but for the record, if I'm being realistic, my main ones I want now are uh, Zootopia, Inside Out, and Incredibles. Well, Monsters Inc. looks super fun too. Yeah, I'm actually super uh, excited to see uh, everything that they do because basically, it's been a lot of cinematic stuff and just a little bit of gameplay over the past. But the gameplay year. looks fantastic. Did you see the uh, door factory set portion? I did. Yes. Oh man, and the the, the this frozen you get basically ice skates and you do like a yeah. I think they call and it you Goofy's fight the freaking snow monster from the yeah movie. yeah I think his name is Marshmallow. I think I saw some merchandise. Uh, but yeah, that, 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 I mean, that was a given. I'm like, if they do Frozen, he's got to be a mini boss. And I kind of hope they had give you some way to fight Hans, if he's even in it. <laughs> it would be a slaughter, though, wouldn't it? Uh, you, you fought Clayton in Kingdom Hearts 1. Clayton from Tarzan? Yeah. Tarzan has a, like, Clayton has a freaking, like, shotgun. He's He can be a teeny bit of a threat. Hans is literally just a dude. You fought Captain <laughs> Hook in 1. All he had was a sword. Come on. I guess. Kingdom Hearts is not, it is not a series held back by logic. You can at least admit that. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so, any 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 other games you want to talk about from E3? I think we have room for there's, one more. There's one last one that's in my mind, and it's not one I think of when we talk about things that we need to talk about from E3. Which one? Um, but Devolver Digital had a press conference recently. Okay, let's party! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah! Suck on my missile punch! And they announced they are bringing the 2004 Dreamcast game Metal Wolf right. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. Yeah, they're bringing it to PS4, Xbox, and PC. And I will buy it day one. I I don't... I The game looks pretty decent. And I actually, even if I buy it and it plays horribly, I don't care because I think that may legitimately be the funniest game I have ever seen. The cutscenes are incredible. Yes. Um... So those of you that don't know what Metal Wolf is, allow me to give you just a basic synopsis of the plot. I'm the maker of Dark Souls, by the way. Yes, from software, who, uh, who is people that made Dark Souls made this game. So, you are the president of the United States, who has been usurped by your vice president, and you must use your giant mech hidden underneath the White House in order to take America back from the evil hands of your vice president. Who also has a mech. Who also has a mech. And even beyond that premise, the dialogue and scenarios are mad. It's Japanese craziness in the best goddamn way. Because here's the thing, it's not even English, it's just... No! It's just really over the top. The voice actors are American, it's not, it's just, what they say is insane! Look like this party is just getting started. Believe (laughs) in your own justice. 
And the villain, one of the best villains ever, that, that vice president. Half his dialogue is just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what was that one line? Funny. I love you so much, I want to hug you to death! Or something like that. Yes. It's and great! It looks like Billy Mitchell makes it even better. <laughs> yes, the, the, the two best friends I saw there, let's play, and they immediately went, Billy Mitchell! And it makes sense even now, Billy Mitchell has become a real-life villain. Yeah, I almost Good met him once, cheating. by the way. A decade ago, I was uh, I don't know, six years ago, I was volunteering in a museum video game exhibit, and for their opening festival, I was in the break room. And this guy walked in. And I was like, I know that tie. Holy shit! But I didn't bother him. Yeah, I, I, I'm for the most part, unless I'm for specifically in line for a meet and greet or something like that. I don't like to bother famous people when I see them. Uh, I, I remember the... I went to I went to MegaCon once, and um, a dude that plays. Um, in Lord of the Rings, um, Elijah Wood's friend, not um, oh, one of Marion Austin, Pippen. Austin, um, one of the Hobbits. His, yes, uh, but basically, uh, he was coming out of the restroom, mm-hmm. and like three people mobbed him, Aww. and I'm like, dude, I never want to be that guy. Yeah, the one <laughs> I think I, I haven't met that many films. But I think the only one I mean, I met them when they have booths at cons that were panels, so that's fine. I think the one time I've seen someone kind of famous, and I did stop to talk to him. Uh, I went to E3 a couple years ago, and one of my favorite YouTubers, Pro Jared, was running around. You know him? Oh, neat. And I did. I tried to be louder or anything, but I just told him I really respect his work, and it was nice to see him in person. And he he actually did take it like a pro. He was like, "Thanks so much." He, he seemed okay with just a quick nice th- nice to see you here. I think just a. I think just saying, hey, I like your stuff, or hey, it's it's neat to see you. Yeah, that's what I did. Just a, a quick one thing, especially if they're just out and about, not doing anything. Specific. Yeah, he wasn't he wasn't talking to anyone or anything. Yeah, but you never like I've I've seen this going to cons or events or things like that all the time. If they're in the con- if they're in a conversation, if they're do- look like they're doing something really busy, if they're not in their booth, or if they're like I said, coming out of the <laughs> restroom. Don't interrupt. Yes. <laughs> How do we get from talking about this from Metal Wolf Chaos? Billy Mitchell. Oh, of course. All things lead back yeah. to Billy Mitchell. <laughs> yes. uh, but yeah, no. Metal Wolf Chaos. Like I've Look up the cut scenes. Look up a Let's Play. Have you seen what the uh, post-game completion bonuses are? I have not. I've never beaten the I've never I, played I the saw, game. Look up the, seen... awesome, look up the Awesome Games Done Quick stream. They beat it in like an hour, but they play all the cut scenes. I know one of them is a American flag skin for the mech. One of them is a gun that shoots a football or confetti. And one is a gun that shoots sharks that plow through the ground. <laughs> of course. And you also the the White House is a boss. They cover in armor, and your assistant goes. They should call it the Fight House. And the boss life meter pops oh, up. God. Fight House. Um, beautiful. I can't wait beautiful. to play this game. <laughs> I I'm excited. And do you know why? Because I'm the president of the United States. That's his catchphrase. Yes. That's what ends the game. He gives a speech. <laughs> because I'm, you can just say anything. Because I'm the. Oh, and have you seen the tagline for the re-release? The website. Mech America Great Again, which <laughs> yes. is a bunch of MAGA people were butt hurt over. No, that, it's perfect. <laughs> I, I I hate Trump, but that is perfect. Yes. Uh, and oh, you have seen the beginning when he shoots the statue, right? Yes. Okay, just a quick thing. Oh, that I think the, we can move on after this. The memorial, uh, like the 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 river parts. <laughs> well, the game com- the game came out during W, so I think he's a W analog in the statues of his dad. So if you shoot this statue, there's no indicator that you should. If you do it for a few seconds, you hear his ghost go, don't shoot at your father, Michael. You shoot some more, he goes, you're making me sad, Michael. You shoot some more, and he goes, have you lost your American soul, Michael? It's glorious. Wow. Like, you can't make this shit up. No. Just, and I'm, I, it's almost at the point where I'm like, you make a movie of this. I will be there. I will camp out. This is the best. Oh, Metal Wolf. Man, uh, let me know if you're bored. I'm going to I have to make the freaking uh, – I'll make a thumbnail for you for this episode of freaking Captain Falcon in the Metal Wolf. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Man. I think that perfectly describes the E3 talk portion of it. Yeah. Right also, do you know who the voice of Captain Falcon is? I just know him as the Pounch guy, so no. It's the Japanese voice of Vegeta. Oh, neat. <laughs> yeah, isn't that weird? Uh, I'm so used to Chris Zabop being all gravelly, but yeah. Um, so that will bring an end, to, I think, to our Smash Brothers. I mean, to our, <laughs> to our E3 talk. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, it's laughs> we talk about Captain Falcon. I'm like, yeah, Smash yeah, Brothers. Metal, Metal, Metal Wolf is an assist trophy. <laughs> yes, do it. It's not coming to Switch. I don't care. Break the rule. Put him in. <laughs> Give him its own level. Where, like, in the background, you just see them fighting. You hear, Richard! <laughs> a 
speaking of background stuff, did you notice one neat thing? Uh, I don't know if you watch any of the gameplay of the Ridley stuff. Not really. Go ahead. Uh, when you do Ridley's final smash and he blows up mm-hmm. the, the, the Samus' ship. Yeah. When you cut back to the screen, the ship is 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 flying away in the background. Oh, I think I heard smoke. that. They're adding a kind of cool little touches. Like um, you saw what they added to Mega Man's final smash. Yeah, Proto Man and Base. There's a lot of assists. Like Ness and Lucas have their sidekick show up. Pokemon trainer can be a girl. Like they're they're just even for existing. Also, one stuff. Of the tiny, tiny thing about Pokemon trainer being a girl. She has shinies. <laughs> Finally, the color palettes are not just random. Yeah. Also, <laughs> I'm gonna say. And four, I was really sad to see Squirtle go. Like, never cared that much for Ivysaur, but Squirtle and Charizard I liked. But I, and when I was short down, I was like, because I never liked the the motivating you to switch to them. And now they're like, no, we're getting rid of that that weakening thing. Yeah, you just so stick with you your favorite. Yeah, if you have a favorite, just stick with them the entire Though time. Though I, I hope that they give an option to let you choose which one you start out with, because that's still valuable they time. Do, I think it's going to work the same way that it does in Brawl, where you could just select the Pokemon that's on screen that you want to start. Oh, because I remember uh, in Brawl, you could start with Zero Suit Samus by holding a button or something. But now it's yeah. just separate. No, but um, the reason why I know this is because um, during the Smash Invitational, Armada played straight Ivysaur the entire time. Mm. Um, I need to look these up, and I might even yeah. I might even play some Smash Wii U tonight just to brush up on things. Even though it sounds like now I see why they didn't port Wii U to Switch because it sounds like this is going to be just about everything that had it more. It was, it, in a weird way, it's it, it's similar to four, but the main thing is the reason why that is is because four has so much old stuff, anyways. Yeah. And this is kind of like we're just putting everything, all the old stages, all the old yeah. characters. I'm sure there'll like, still be a, a level or two that I miss, but whatever. We got I yeah. like I was still I missed the ice climbers. They're back. I miss Roy. He's not just DLC, and th- they're, they're probably going to do more characters with DLC past that. Like. Yeah, I think we're not gonna. Maybe we're gonna get one or two more characters between now and December, and I think that's it. I'm hoping maybe August. three or four. Um, cause I, I feel like each game has averaged like a dozen new characters. So if you cut that in half and get six or seven, I'd I'd be okay with that. Yeah, because they said like the whole goal is like we're bringing everybody, yeah. so don't expect too many new fighters. Yeah, and that's okay. But, but then, I, like, that's what you use for the. That's what DLC is for. Yeah, and for the record, what do you have any most wanted newcomers? DLC, um, or in general, if we're talking strict Nintendo properties, it doesn't have to be, but sure. Oh, in that case, I want a Klonoa. Uh, oh, Klonoa's <laughs> awesome. They're making a movie. I of want them. Klonoa and Smash. Yeah, especially um, because um, the funny thing is, the only Klonoa game that's on the Nintendo console, I believe, is the Wii remake. Of the no, first. no, they were two GBA games too. Oh yeah. But if you're talking main ones, yeah, they remade the first one for Wii, so it, it's easily eligible. But I, what about okay? If it's strictly Nintendo, well, then who? If we're talking strictly Nintendo, and this is going to seem like an oddball, I really want... Uh, what's his name? Oh, yeah, oh, he's I'm, great. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> no, give me one second. Name um, the game. Uh, Star Fox. Uh, like, uh, Pla- Panther guy. Oh, uh, Panther. That's, his name is Panther. Oh, Panther. I think you can make a Spacey with a unique moveset, and he'd be like the big buff. And okay, yeah. Still has lasers, of course, but like everything else would be unique. Like that would be, I think, a really like give us. I think there's two franchises that need more representation besides Star Fox, but I can't think of. You can, like Ridley's in, but I can't Kong. think of. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and uh, maybe is, maybe Mother, but I'm not a big Mother fan. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, because the thing is, like, also like Metroid. Like, we finally got Ridley, but then yeah. I think that's that's where you cap it. You're not gonna. Uh, yeah, him. Metroid. The problem is, it's it's always been such a, like an isolated kind of game. You don't really have many options. Yeah. And the thing is with Donkey Kong is like, yeah, people want like K. Rule, but the thing is the stuff, popular Donkey Kong stuff now, it's like, where you're going to have like the Tropical Freeze boss be a playable character. Well, no, no, there are other Kongs they can do. Like, even if we're just going by Tropical Freeze, that's Dixie, Cranky, and Funky playable. I guess. Yeah, not, not people care about DK as I do, so whatever. Um, yeah. And then, of course, there are people that want freaking um, people like uh, Spyro and Crash, which would be super neat. That would be fantastic, but... and I'm thinking it's possible, because Crash is coming to Switch. I'm guessing Spyro will at some point. I would love it, but we'll see. Uh, and for the record, my, my number one third parties are uh, Sora and Rayman. And I know a, a bunch of people, because if you think like old school Nintendo, like Simon Belmont, Castlevania. Oh, he's been a popular one. I'm like, if Ryu made it, Simon might be able to. It Especially because now that Konami has a good relationship because Snake is back. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, oh, I'll make a deep cut. Goyamon. The mystical ninja. <laughs> Neat. It won't happen, but a man can dream. Um, but I think that can bring our E3 talk to a close. And honestly, I think we have enough material for one half of an episode here. Um, that's the benefit of not having a time where either of us needs to log off. Yes. Um, <laughs>